Thank you very much. Guys, give me a shout if you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And I can see a perfectly dark room. So I'm going to assume all of you are with me from the start. Uh, very good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Vijay Ganesh. I have 15 years of experience in HR. Uh, I've worked with multiple startups, scaling them from zero to one. I've had magnificent journeys, growing from zero employees to 900 employees in the blink of an eye, creating valuable products and services. And through all of this, the one thing that I've truly enjoyed in the HR profession is recruitment. And I'm sure every college student here would, uh, would appreciate that fact, uh, given that you know, you're all going to be freshers entering into the workforce pretty soon. I've recruited thousands of people uh, over the last decade and a half, uh, personally hiring all of them. And like I said, recruitment is the silver bullet for me when it comes to building an organization. Because it is easy to build the culture of an organization when you are hiring the right people. Now more than ever, right, there are so many generations of people who are concurrently working right now especially in the tech industry. You can talk about baby boomers, you've got your Gen X, you've got Gen Y, you've got your millennials, and you've got Gen Z, all working in the same space. Probably from the industrial revolution to the AI revolution that we are seeing right now, we've not had these many different generations working together. The reason for that being, the latest AI revolution has come about in the blink of an eye. While the previous evolutions took decades and decades to nurture, bring different parts of the workforce together, the AI revolution, the tech revolution, has ensured that there is a very speedy induction of Gen Z into the workforce. With this induction of Gen Z into the workforce also comes a few challenges, which is what I want to address today. How do you bridge the gap between people who are 60 years old and people who are 20 years old. Each of them come with their own wants and needs and aspirations. They want different things from their job. They want different things from their career. They expect different things from their employers. We've had so many wonderful entrepreneurs talk earlier today. I'm going to be talking about the people who are going to be supporting those entrepreneurs in delivering those dreams. And to do that, each generation in this workforce has to work cohesively with each other. So I'm going to take the example of, of three generations, uh, talk to you in detail about what they want and aspire to, and see what are the ways in which we can bring them together so that they work cohesively. First, let's talk about our baby boomers, right? Show of hands, how many of you here have had ugly, awkward conversations with your parents or your professors about your careers? that you're doing something either you would want to do and they don't agree with it, or you're not doing something that they want you to do. I'm sure all of you have experienced such an ugly conversation at least once in your life, right? Now imagine moving into a workforce. This is your first job. You're looking forward to your life and your wonderful career. And you have a baby boomer in your organization who comes in with vastly different ideas. You want to send them a WhatsApp message, they require everything in email. And you go, okay, Boomer, I'll do whatever you ask me to do, right? How does that breed trust between the two of you? I have heard people who are 50 plus years call Gen X slackers. I have heard them call Gen Z snowflakes. I've also heard them say that Gen Z is the most entitled uh, generation to come into our workforce. How many of you here are born after 1996? Can you give me a show of hands, please? And give me a sound. <laughs> exactly. You guys are going to form the largest part of India's workforce by 2030, right? <laughs> give it up, give it up. You deserve it. But at the same time, as much as I'm rooting for your success, I also request you to build relationships with every generation before you. You're, you, you are all giving me a shout out when, when we're talking about Gen Z, but none of you gave a shout out when we're talking about the boomers, right? I'm not pointing something out, but it is an important distinction for you to understand. The reason being, you don't agree with most of the things that they say. How can you bridge that gap? 
understand the value that a baby boomer brings to the table. These are people who have valued hard work, loyalty, and longevity. The institutional knowledge that a person possesses after having worked for 10 plus years in an organization is simply something you cannot match the minute you join that organization. Use that knowledge, use that experience, build on top of it. Bring your new ideas to the table, couple that with the experience that a baby boomer brings to the table. Then, all of you, including the boomer, including the Gen Z, the, the entrepreneurs, the leaders, all of you will be able to take the company in the right direction, and you'll all be pulling the company in the one direction towards success. That is the key. So let's talk a little bit more about Gen Z. Uh, I'm sure uh, a, a lot of you will agree with, with what I'm saying, and I'm sure there are also going to be some counterpoints. But you're literally the first generation that has not grown up without a smartphone. You've all been bred on smartphone and technology. You are incredibly tech savvy, but it also comes with its own set of restrictions, right? How many of you here have looked at an Instagram reel and thought, hey, I wish I had clothes like that? Hey, I wish I could walk like that. Hey, I wish I had abs like that, right? You have looked at the success of previous generations on Instagram Reels and felt, how do I achieve this? You have grown up on that air of judgment, right? You feel others are judging you through the phone screen. You feel yourself judging others through that same screen as well. Now, as much dopamine as it's being released by you know, your social media, it is not entirely a great thing. Because with it comes that anxiety and that depression that, hey, what if I'm not able to match up to this? Hey, when will my life going to be like the one that I'm seeing on screen right now? Now, instead of focusing on, on things like that, focus on what your core skills are. How do I build those skills up? You can do that and you can expedite that process of building your skill by connecting with these previous generations and learning from their mistakes and their experiences and their successes and failures. And to do that is not going to be easy. Communication is the key to that. But apart from it, there is also a huge role that leaders have to play in this conversation and this communication. Leaders cannot simply talk about metrics of productivity, about creating value for shareholders. They have got to look at the people who are working for them as human beings. They've got to understand that human beings go through things. And different generations are going to go through different things in a different way. And leaders have to facilitate these conversations between these different generations to ensure that that institutional knowledge is not lost. And that is the great role that I see leaders playing. Uh, somebody had quoted uh, in one of the earlier speeches that you fake it till you make it, right? When it comes to communication, keep communicating till everybody gets it. It may not happen in one shot, it may not happen in two, but the point is to keep communicating and to keep communicating in the way that every generation understands. Your baby boomers prefer face-to-face -face communications. Gen Z is good with a text. Millennials are somewhere in between and probably prefer a FaceTime or a WhatsApp call. You've got to be able to address all of this. You've got to be able to address different generations to be able to bring them together. I've seen a lot of quotations from wonderful people who have lived and loved before us. I've seen quotes from Rabindranath Tagore and APJ Abdul Kalam on the walls of these, these great institutions. But how many of you have actually imbibed those values in your life? It is something that you walk past every day. You probably can recite that by heart, but do you live those values? It is the same with corporate culture. You cannot put buzzwords on a wall make a nice graffiti out of it, and hope that that will build the organizational culture for you. Leaders have to live those values day in, day out. Leadership is about the most boring stuff. It is about showing up every day. It is about being there for the people that you surround yourself with. It is about supporting them through thick and thin. Leadership today calls Gen Z entitled. I absolutely disagree with them. Gen Z is impatient. And you know why? Because when you can click on an app and you can order groceries in 10 minutes, when you can order food in 30 minutes, 
when you can watch an entire show from the first episode to the last in one sitting. They are going to expect success like that. They're going to join an organization, and like Tavamani pointed out in her speech, they, if, if you ask them what their aspirations are, they will want to become a CEO in the next two years. You've got to drive them on that journey. It is not about telling them, hey, that's not going to be possible. It takes 30 years to be a CEO. Let's turn that mirror on ourselves and say, hey, why didn't I think that I could be a CEO in two years? And you will start building that, that culture of innovation and entrepreneurship over there. And that's how you can bring these multiple generations together. So I'm going to, I'm going to wind up my speech with a, with a message to Gen Z. I want you guys to give me one more shout out here. My Gen Z, born after 1996, give me a shout. <coughs> I want you guys to be truthful to yourself. And I want you to understand who you are. If you like money, if you want a great package right after you leave college, if you want to be an entrepreneur, be honest with yourself. Tell yourself that, believe in yourself, and you go after that goal. If you want work-life balance, if you want to be home by 6 p.m., if you want to go meet your girlfriend for a drink after that, <laughs> temper your expectations. You cannot be the CEO of an entrepreneurial uh, venture and still go back home and do that, right? You've got to temper your expectations. You've got to understand what you're going after. You've got to be willing to put in the work. Success does not come instantly, no matter how many YouTube videos you watch, no matter how many Insta Reels that you watch of people telling you that you can achieve it in one day. No. The entrepreneurs that you see sitting here in front of you in these, in these couple of rows have put their blood and sweat into this. They have worked hard on those skills. They all have their strength areas and they all have their growth areas and they have worked on both of them. And that is my request to you. Learn from everybody you meet. Keep learning. Continuous learning will take you to the heights of success like nothing else. And that's all I had for you today. Thank you all so much. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you, TEDx.